You know, a personal anecdote here, a little more personal than I usually get. I remember, oh gosh, about 25 years ago, and I'd been here a few years, and I was walking up 17th Street, a very steep hill, and a young man said to me, my goodness, you have good legs. How did that happen? And I said, well, I live in San Francisco, and I walk. If you walk in San Francisco, you know that it's an arduous town to walk in, but also a town with a lot of pleasures. It's a walking city, even though it's a hilly city. But lately, for pedestrians, it's become somewhat of a dangerous city. Next up, we're going to speak with Nicole Ferrara of Walk SF about how to make San Francisco safe for walkers again. I don't know if people would come up to me again and say you had nice legs. I'd be scared to walk. I mean, what is it with all the pedestrian accidents lately? Well, we really don't want to make people scared to walk. Yeah. So um, I think in San Francisco what the issue is is that so many people do walk, mm -hmm. and they have a right to do so safely. Um, and moreover, it's really um, incredible that we have so many being, people being hit and injured or hit and severely injured or killed yeah. on our streets when we know how to prevent those crashes from happening in the first place. So, um, you know, in San Francisco, we've always had more people getting hit and injured as pedestrians than other cities across and, the And US. why is that? Is that partly because of the geography? I think it's part, it's mostly because we have more people walking in our mm -hmm. city. Um, but we shouldn't have this disproportionate impact that, um, you know, in San Francisco, we have about 20% of people taking trips via foot, but mm -hmm. over 60% or around 60% of the people who die in traffic crashes are pedestrians. Um, and the reasons for that are, are pretty clear. You know, you don't have um, two tons of steel surrounding you mm -hmm. when you walk. And we have a lot of dangerous streets that were really designed for automobiles. You don't see streets like in Coal Valley. Those aren't the ones where we see people getting hit and killed. Mm -hmm. Those streets were made for people. We see the streets in Soma that were made to shuttle traffic through them to the to the bridge. Um, those are the more dangerous streets where we see right. the most terrible uh, crashes. Now, as I say, I've been here 30 years, and is it my imagination that, or just because social media talks about it more, but in the last few years, there seems to be a real spike in pedestrians being hit by cars or, or, or bikes. I mean, it's also not, you know, bikes aren't uh, off the hook. I remember there, there was that horrible accident mm -hmm. where uh, kind of a clueless bicyclist killed a pedestrian, an old Chinese gentleman mm -hmm. at Castro and Market. Mm -hmm. uh, people fly around in cars and bikes and seem to pay no attention to pedestrians. Yeah, and it's, it's definitely been increasing. And I think as more people move to San Francisco, the tensions are arising, um, mm -hmm. the tensions between modes and the tensions of how to get around. And we can only expect that we're going to see more and more, um, more and more hostility if we don't really solve our transportation challenges here in San Francisco. And I think the main ways to do that are to figure out ways that we can move people from point A to point B, not only more efficiently, but safely. Um, so safety needs to be at the center of all transportation decisions, and we simply can't also manage that many people with everyone in their own automobile, mm -hmm. one person per automobile. It's just not going to work. So we need to rely more heavily on transit projects, projects that help get people out of cars and onto the sidewalks, mm -hmm. um, car, uh, projects that help encourage more people to bicycle and have a safe place to bicycle that um, that doesn't conflict with pedestrians right. or, or vehicles for that matter. So talk to me a little bit about Walk SF. How long has it been in existence? What's its mission? Mm -hmm. And how do you liaise with you know the city departments of transportation? How do you liaise with people who drive cars. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think nowadays, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, there, there has been, you talk about fear and antagonism. Mm -hmm. It's been like, oh, if, if you drive a car, you're a bad person. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. if you ride a bike, you're okay. Mm -hmm. And there's, an, there's been a number of accidents with mm -hmm. bikes hitting pedestrians. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you get these three groups of people together that all have a right to their space yeah. on the streets of San Francisco? That's a great question. So, so Walk SF, our mission is to make walking in San Francisco safe so that our city is healthier and more livable. Mm -hmm. So we do that. Um, we've been around since 1998. We started out as volunteer-based organization, and we're now um, a staff of four growing. We have about 1,000 members across the city. So we have folks that are members and support our work. Um, and we put on annual events like Walk to Work Day to encourage walking, mm -hmm. Walk and Roll to School Day. 
Um, and the unique thing about this Vision Zero effort, which is um, the goal to end all traffic deaths by 2024 mm -hmm. in San Francisco, and it's not just about pedestrians, and that's one of the things um, that you've asked about. But so the goal, the interesting thing about this goal is that it started in Sweden, and the concept is that we cannot just expect humans to act perfectly. We have to, we have to assume that we're gonna make mistakes because we're human. Mm -hmm. Somebody is going to you know, walk out into the middle of the street without looking. Or yes. walk out into the middle of a sidewalk with their headphones on. With their headphones on. Somebody is going to take a turn in their car without seeing that, that person that's about to enter the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. it's, it's going to happen. And we can't assume that we're gonna educate our way out of that. Um, we should try to educate and we should certainly educate um, in terms of DMV shifts. We need to make sure the DMV is actually training people to drive and that people who drive understand that this is a privilege and mm -hmm. that when we're growing up as kids, we're learning how to walk and bike safely through our Safe Routes to Schools program. We certainly need to educate, but that's not the, the only answer, right? We need to build a transportation system that makes it easy. So. It makes it easy to prevent a crash. Um, when I walk out into the middle of the street in a crosswalk, am I visible in that crosswalk? Mm -hmm. Can drivers actually see me? And there are simple things we can do to help help drivers see pedestrians. Move parking back from the corner so that you don't see a pedestrian the second you get to the intersection, but you see them 40 right. feet behind so that you can actually slow down in time. Put in flashing lights so that when a pedestrian enters the crosswalk across a major thoroughfare, drivers are alerted that there's someone there. So these simple things are proven to prevent crashes and there are easy things that we can do to just help people out. And that's what I think is so unique and special about this approach. It doesn't say, hey, you're to blame, you're to blame, you're to blame. It says the city can take responsibility and actually prevent these crashes from right. happening. So how, how have you impacted city policy or transit so far. You, you mentioned something about maybe we don't park all the way to uh, a corner so you can actually see the pedestrian crosswalk. I mean, have you had an impact on the design of streetscapes and bike lanes and turning lanes and sidewalks? Yeah, so Vision Zero started in 2014, January mm -hmm. 2014. Since then, about 12 different city agencies have adopted actual policies committing to Vision Zero, laying out specific things they do. They do. Um, I think the most significant is the MTA, the Municipal Transportation Agency, responsible for actually implementing all of those projects and plans. Mm -hmm. um, they actually did that daylighting where you shift that parking back across the entire tenderloin last year. This year, they're looking at projects like implementing Polk Street, where there will actually be um, bulb outs at corners along most corners in Polk Street um, that help not only push parking back, but they mm -hmm. also help shorten the crossing distance and slow that turning movement. So, so a uh, car has to turn slower or it's going to end up on the curb. Right. It's like, can you make, you can either make a 90 degree turn or you can make a, you know, really right. wide quick turn. So mm -hmm. a 90 degree turn is going to be a lot slower than a wider 120 degree turn, right? Right. So um, it forces people to slow down. And then when they're turning and making that 90 degree turn, they're actually facing the crosswalk. Right and they're looking at people. Now, do you think, and if you think I'm being unfair, you know, push back. You mm -hmm. said, you know, we, we're humans, we can't be expected to, you know, always be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a fair statement. But do you think sometimes that groups like Walk SF or the Bike Coalition, the quote unquote greener groups, make it all about, oh, cars drive badly? Is there, is there any responsibility on the part of the pedestrians, of the people that are trying to walk, like to educate? And you know, I, I've said it three times in this interview because I know, as you say, we're not perfect and we get distracted, but I see so many people nowadays on bikes and in cars as well mm -hmm. and walking with headphones in. I'm like, that, mm -hmm. is there some sort of education effort around there to let people know if you can't hear what's going on around mm -hmm. you, it's dangerous. Is, is education part of what you're doing as well to not only teach people how to watch out for pedestrians and make it safer mm -hmm. for them, but to teach walkers there is a safer way to walk. You know, that's not really, to be honest, that's not where we're spending our time and energy. <laughs> um, I think it's, you know, we, we're human. We, we walk, that's, that's what makes us human. Yeah. We all know how to do it. We all know when we're doing it properly, when we're not. Um, it just feels a little like 
like the mo not the most important use of our time, our limited bandwidth to yeah. focus on, you know, how can we get people to walk without being on a cell phone? Um, you know, we're, it, like look at our human nature, right? Look at how we're how yeah. we're moving as a society. We're yeah. all glued to our phones. This is, you know, people not, you know, people are walking on their phones on the sidewalk and, you know, maybe they trip. That's that's up to them yeah. to be cognizant of that. Where we think we can make the biggest impact is really on those major street design changes and policy shifts. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, again, knocking on every person's shoulder when you're walking, like, I don't, I, people know when they're not being safe. I don't mm -hmm. think that the education telling them, hey, you should really, you know, keep your eyes up, like, people know that. So what we need to do really is focus on how government can be creating safer streets in the first place, because at the end of the day, um, the people who are getting hit on our streets, the data say it's not the pedestrians at fault most of the time. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we need to focus on what's actually killing people. And what's actually killing people isn't headphones. What's killing people is speed. Mm -hmm. What's killing people is people failing to yield in crosswalks. So how do we slow down speeds on our streets? How do we make it easier for drivers? Again, not, and I'm not saying it's the driver's fault. I think drivers need more help. I mm -hmm. think the government needs to help drivers be safer on the street. I think we can all, you know, we can create a safer street system or we can just point fingers and mm -hmm. that doesn't really solve the problem. Right. So I think, you know, there are certain, if we had all the bandwidth in the world, maybe we would start thinking about how mm -hmm. to educate people walking. I'm not sure, yeah. but we don't have all the bandwidth in the world. So we need to focus strategically on the things that are going to make the biggest culture change yeah. shifts. In our last few moments, talk to me about the places in San Francisco where pedestrians are most at risk. I mean, there are some hot spots where people seem to repeatedly come into contact, as you say, with mm -hmm. two tons of steel. Mm -hmm. And in that case, well, the car is going to win. Right, exactly. So. There's what's pretty remarkable is just six percent of our streets account for over sixty percent of severe and fatal pedestrian injuries. So those are streets. Every single street in the Tenderloin, for instance, um, Sixth Street in Soma, Sunset, Geary, Market Street, Van Ness, um, Sloat, Nineteenth Avenue. So again, the the streets which are kind of throughways. The throughways, the streets that tell a driver that cue a driver. Go fast. There's nothing in your way. Just speed as fast. You know, you mm -hmm. just you can just go as fast as possible. Those one-way streets downtown. Um, so there's something again. This really re it really reflects. There's something about the way our streets are designed that it's not just when someone turns onto one of those six percent of streets they all mm -hmm. of a sudden become a terrible person. It's the way our streets are designed that are leading to all of these severe and fatal injuries. Right. Um, and that's why we are so focused on on reshaping those streets and making them safe by design. Right. So just about 30 seconds left. Tell me what is the the next couple of years look like for you as far as initiatives for Walk SF? What are mm -hmm. the major things that you're going to be pursuing to try to get the city to do to make our, our streets and our sidewalks safer? Um, so in the next few years, I think we'll really be focusing on those transformative projects. We've done a lot of really quick and effective things like the daylighting across the Tenderloin, but now we really need to see those bigger streetscape projects that are really going to make a street truly safe and help people who want to take transit, take transit more eff effectively and efficiently. Um, we want to see more improvements around schools. We want families and schools to in the school community to get involved in traffic calming around their schools. Kids should always be safe walking to and from school. So that's what we'll be focusing on. Great. Thanks for being on the show with us and, and good luck with Walk SF and keeping our sidewalks safe. Thank you. Thanks for Next up, me. our conversation with Madeline Lim and her work fighting stereotypes, negative stereotypes about people of color in Hollywood film. We'll be right back. Thanks, Thanks. That's good.